if I had to guess, you probably have one of these laying around, a multi-tool, something like a Swiss Army knife, where it's decent at a lot of individual tasks, but it's not great. It's not the best screwdriver. It's not the best knife. And so that's kind of what I was expecting when I was using the app that I'm going to talk about in this video. I thought it would be pretty good at a bunch of individual editing tasks, but not really great at any specific ones. But as I started to use the app, I was actually wrong. This was the best version of some of the tools and things I needed done separate from my main editing app, Adobe Premiere Pro. These kind of miscellaneous tasks of downloading videos, compressing things, doing quick screen recordings, I can do them all within this single app that I'm going to talk about in this video. Full disclosure, this is a sponsored demo and review of Wondershare Uniconverter. When I first opened up Uniconverter, I was pretty overwhelmed, to be honest. This app has a lot of different things that it can do, and it took a bit of trial and error and opening up the different tools to determine which ones were worth adding into my workflow instead of using things that I already had or using websites that can do the same thing. So here are the 10 that I've been using the most over the past few months of doing my video editing. First up, we have the video converter tool. Now, you know, sometimes when you're trying to drop something into your video editing program, it just won't import it or it won't open it or you're trying to preview something and you just can't preview it. Sometimes it's just better to convert all the videos, all the different files into the same format so your editing program is happy. That's where this converter tool comes in. You just drag in your video files, select the output file format, the resolution, et cetera, and then you can just batch all the compressing at once walk away from a computer at the end of the day, do it overnight, come back, all your files are ready. Next up is the downloader tool. You know, pretty often when I'm editing a video, I need to go online and find a specific thing that I want to reference or show as B-roll. I need to download it into this timeline. So I will use the downloader tool to do that. This download tool lets me quickly download the clip and insert that into the videos I need. Next is the compressor tool. Now, have you ever tried to share a video through like iMessage or Discord or wherever else and it's just like, too big or doesn't go through or they say you need to re reduce the file size, that's where this compressor tool comes in. It lets me choose the file, choose a percentage of the file size I want to minimize it to. So let's say I want a half the percentage, I'd put 50%. Then I can compress it at different quality settings. So if the quality is not really important and I can just do low, low quality, then I'll do that. Or if I want to keep the integrity of the video but have the file be smaller, I can choose those settings specifically. Doing this is really helpful when a video is just a little bit too big for sharing on a social media platform, or if you're being charged by file size on your uploads, like on a platform like Wistia or Vimeo, when you're being charged for that bandwidth, it is helpful to have those file sizes smaller. Next is the text-to-speech tool. So let's say you have a need to do a quick voiceover over a certain quote or snippet of text and add that to a video, but you don't want to use your own voice for some reason or you don't have someone else to record for you, you can quickly just use the text-to-speech tool to choose from 18 different voices and styles and convert that written text to speech. And it actually does a pretty good job. I was surprised by it, honestly. And to showcase kind of how well it does, I'm actually going to use it to read the next tool I'm going to cover, which is autocrop. If you want to take a horizontal video and quickly make it into a vertical video for social media, like a shorter reel, use the autocrop tool. Import your video file, Choose the platform and aspect ratio, adjust the speed of the motion, and choose which part of the video you want to trim down to, and then export. Your new vertical video will showcase the main action and subjects in the video. For the next tool of watermarking, have you ever been in a situation where you don't necessarily trust that your client is going to pay you after you're done with the work, or maybe you have something that has been color graded, or you feel like it's just not ready yet, and you don't want them to like rush it to publish it? You know, they have log footage that is ungraded and you don't want them to publish it yet, go ahead and put a watermark on it and they probably won't then publish it. So you could add the watermark until they pay you or until you feel like it's ready to publish. And the watermark editor lets you quickly add one to the video before sharing it with them. Next, you have the screen recording tool. And sometimes I just need to quickly record part of my screen to show a website or to show part of an app that I'm demoing. And I don't really want to fire up ScreenFlow or Screen Studio. I just want to quickly make a file. So this has built-in one-to-one pixel quality videos that you can screen record with whatever cropping or aspect ratio you want. And you can include the audio from your computer if you need it or from a microphone or from a webcam. So you can just quickly make a little screen recording and send it to somebody. Next, the Smart Trimmer tool will remove silent segments throughout a video so you can start editing without all of those blank spaces in there. It'll go ahead and find the parts of the video where there was just complete silence. Maybe you were checking your notes or you were looking at your phone or what have you. And you weren't actually talking to the camera. It'll take all those parts out so that when you get to the editing part, you don't have to scrub through those, but it also can minimize your hard drive space on your source videos 
if you then take the new video and get rid of that old one that has all the dead space in it. I've also been using GIF Creator to take part of a video and then show that in a blog post if I want to or share it on social media just to like a quick auto-playing preview of it to put that in an email newsletter to entice people to click through to the actual video. And all those can be done using the GIF Creator. You just add a video clip and it can create a GIF out of it. And then there's the voice changer, which can make your audio sound a little bit filtered. And so let's listen to how the 80s radio effect actually sounds like a speakerphone to me. And, you know, I've had to recreate this in Adobe Audition before, but let's just give it a little sample. So this is an example of what my voice sounds like when I run it through the 80s radio effect. Kind of sounds like a speakerphone. I think you could easily spend more than this app cost on maybe three or four tools that do similar things to all of the things that this app does. Realistically, if you don't have a bunch of apps to do these types of things, or you're just looking to have one app open that can kind of do everything for you, this is actually a pretty good option. I found that having just one app open to alt tab to and quickly do the task I need to and get back to my normal editing app has been pretty, pretty handy. And I didn't even mention some of the AI tools that are integrated into this, like a script generator, some help with thumbnails, and a lot of other tools that they're adding into this as AI becomes more prevalent and more accessible as a video creator. If you're interested in this app and you want to see what it costs, I'll link to it in the description below this video so you can check it out and see their current pricing. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. What are some of the video editing tools and apps that you use separate from the main ones like Premiere and Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve that do similar tasks to what I showed or other things that kind of you just need to do on the side of your main editing apps? I'd love to hear about that, so let me know below. And thanks again to Wondershare for sponsoring this video. And thank you to you for watching. Cheers.